I'm often enamored with Chinese films. They have the unique ability to mix the quirky with the highly emotional to deliver stories that give surprising gut punches. Netflix brings us Super Me, a sci-fi drama that's just a little nuts. But does it have the qualities I listed before? A young man is so exhausted from trying to stay awake, every time he closes his eyes, a demon chases and kills him in his dreams. One night, he realizes he has a special power. He can bring treasures from his dreams into reality. So Sang Yu is our protagonist. He's a middling screenwriter who is plagued by nightmares. These nightmares always feature the same theme. There's this monstrous blue dude trying to kill him. And because of this, I mean, he's just wildly tired from lack of sleep, and it begins to negatively impact his life in a massive way. Sang Yu becomes really likable as a character, despite very little development on him. I think it's due to the charisma of the actor and his mannerisms. A lot of the time he's sweet or endearing, but there are times where he becomes semi-unlikable because arrogance takes over and he becomes pretty self-important. Now, just like with any sci-fi or fantasy type movie, the special effects vary from highly impressive to fairly poor. And I'm willing to overlook the poorer effects that are obviously CGI if the story is engaging and has sucked me in. For Super Me, some of the effects are done really well. There's this smoky and almost fiery effect that surrounds the blue demon, and that effect is really great. There are also some cool effects mixed with sweeping camera movements that create some really effective and unique setting transitions. A few times, some of the graphics are obviously CGI though, but they weren't very prevalent and they didn't impact the feel of the story. As we watch, there are a couple of storylines that are central to the film. One is Sang Yu's ability to grab stuff from his dreams and bring it back to the world when he wakes up. The other is his fawning over a woman he had a crush on back in college. The smash and grab from the dream world to the awake world has some feels of Jumper with Hayden Christensen and Sam Jackson. I mean, this isn't a copy of that movie, but I definitely got vibes of it as the story went along. It's entertaining to watch as Sang Yu discovers this ability too. But the progression of this is also done at breakneck speed. I mean, scenes jump from one to the next as Sang Yu gets more and more treasure. As this happens, we watch his lifestyle also change in accordance with his stuff. This new lifestyle also creates some drama with some less than desirable people. And the story arc comes on pretty quickly and without much buildup. There's also a little ridiculousness that's created. Some of it can be explained away because we're watching someone go into their dreams and know that they're dreaming in order to accomplish a goal. Sometimes this ridiculousness works, and other times, eh, not so much. Now, the one-sided love story is a little bit effective. The context for Sang Yu's feelings are shown through very quick flashback scenes and then reiterated a little more slowly towards the latter half of the film. These two storylines predictably converge, but they're still happening at a rapid pace. We don't ever really get to sit in their friendship or relationship or whatever you really want to call it. And I think that's what sums up what is wrong with this movie. Everything is occurring at crazy speeds, moving from scene to scene and situation to situation without really building out those scenes and situations. The action is exciting and kept the energy up for the majority of the story, but it's almost like it was being used as a distraction during parts. I mean, like, hey, look over here, stuff is going on. Wait, you're beginning to ask questions about plot holes? Okay, look, look over here. There are also some implausibilities within this, but I chalked most of those up to the sci-fi nature, and I feel okay with some of the more wonky things that don't hold any sense of realism. You might find portions of the story, or at least the narrative, a little confusing. I know I did. I actually rewound some of the scenes a few times just to watch it replay because I was scratching my head. Now, I think the answers are mostly there, but they're not easily accessible because the narrative is happening so quickly. There's also a little bit of Freud's psychoanalytic theory at play here. There's an exposition to provide answers, but it's not obvious, and like everything else in the movie, it's told rapidly. As the movie concludes, you might scratch your head, because I did. But that doesn't mean I wasn't enjoying it. The perplexing nature of some of the story actually added a little bit of charm. There's a mid credit scene that really does solidify what we've seen, and it provided the final answer. But for many, I think it may be too little, too late. So for me, did I enjoy this? Yeah and no. I mean, it's an hour and 42 minutes, and it's sort of a mixed bag. Sang Yu began to really grow on me despite a lack of development. I found him to be charismatic and charming, even though he's basically a dream thief and his character progressions are just rushed. The special effects and camera work were impressive and engaging, and they worked to create a unique and visually pleasing world. Even the love story had a sweetness to it that I found endearing. 
but the pace of the narrative that included skipping details and jumping from scene to scene without building out more context, it did begin to wane on me. I never got the sense that all the effort by Sang Yu was leading to something satisfying for us as viewers. As the story wraps, the less than straightforward approach was actually appreciated a little because it made me work, but I'm not sure that the payoff was worth all the work in the end. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a bunch of bloody violence. I give Super Me two and a half out of five couches. So are there any good sci-fis that you've seen recently? Let me know what you watched in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.